Good afternoon and welcome friends, colleagues, and members of the Eye Center family. I'm Mark Manis, Chair of the Department of Ophthalmology and Vision Science at UC Davis. And I'm here today with my Vice Chair and Medical Director, Dr. Michelle Lem. Hi everyone, it's great to be here with you, Mark, and also with everyone joining us online. For those of you whom I have not met, my name is Michelle Lim, and I am, as Dr. Mann has said, the Vice Chair and Medical Director of the Department of Ophthalmology and Vision Science. We realize this isn't the most conventional way to do a groundbreaking, but nonetheless, we have found a way to connect to commemorate this momentous occasion. We are particularly thrilled uh, that you could share this time with us as we commemorate or, or initiate the groundbreaking for the Ernest E. Channon Eye Institute building. And we're grateful for the opportunity to thank many individuals uh, and teams who have come together to make this possible. Our Eye Center began uh, envisioning this building in 2004. So to say the least, we've been preoccupied and excited about this effort for a long time. Before you hear from several members of our UC Davis campus and our UC Davis health leadership, we want to share with you a message to our community and to our healthcare workers. That day, that week, when the news set in, when the world shut down, when together we were forced apart. But there's just something about the human spirit, compassion, kindness, resilience. And there's something about the community at UC Davis Eye Center. Like those on the front lines, we too will succeed together. Push through together. Make the world better together. Together, we'll continue to lead the way and pioneer vision care. UC Davis Eye Center. We'll get through this like we always have. Together. I would like to express my extreme gratitude to our dedicated physicians and healthcare professionals, to our wonderful staff, to our campus leadership, and to the many individuals who have supported us during this unprecedented time and who have helped us mobilize at all levels to care for our patients during this pandemic. We have a great program for you this afternoon and I encourage you to stay to the very end for a special surprise. I don't want to give anything away, but I think it'll be worth the wait. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce Chancellor Gary S. May. Chancellor May became UC Davis's seventh chancellor in 2017. He's a highly engaged leader and has a passion for helping others succeed. In September 2018, Chancellor May was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering. It's one of the highest honors in the field, and it was for his innovations in semiconductor manufacturing, research, and his successful diversity programs for underrepresented groups in engineering. In 2015, President Obama honored him with a presidential award for excellence in STEM me mentoring. Chancellor May has shown his spirit as a true Aggie with his tireless dedication to the broadcasting of UC Davis's strengths and to shaping our path forward. We are very pleased to have him here today to celebrate with us. Now we go live to Chancellor May in Davis. Thank you, Dr. Manis and Dr. Lim. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so pleased to join you in celebrating this momentous occasion. Just over four years ago, a grateful patient made a transformational gift to UC Davis. In fact, it was the largest donation from an individual in the university's history. And it's been our turn to be grateful to Ernest Shannon ever since. 
I've had the privilege of meeting Ernest. And I'm personally inspired by him, not just by his generosity, which is tremendous, but also by his vision for what can be achieved through partnership and innovation. According to Ernest, UC Davis saved his eyesight. Overflowing with appreciation, he made a $38.5 million gift to UC Davis to fund a state-of-the-art center for the medical care of the eyes. His incredible generosity is now coming to fruition in the form of the Ernest E. Shannon Eye Institute at the UC Davis Health Campus. Unfortunately, the pandemic has prevented us from gathering for the groundbreaking, but construction on the building has begun with an estimated completion in the year 2022. The vision of the Ernest E. Shannon Eye Institute is to be the world's transformational leader in collaborative vision research and the development of cures for blinding eye diseases. This aspirational goal will be realized not only through pioneering collaborative vision research, but also in providing world-class eye care and training superbly prepared ophthalmologists and vision scientists. The new facility will be home to the Center for Ocular Regenerative Therapies led by Dr. Paul Seving, who we were able to recruit from the National Eye Institute. The new center will bring together the School of Medicine, Veterinary School, Primate Center, and Campus Vision Scientists in 15 different departments and the Center for Neuroscience. This type of collaboration is what UC Davis is all about. Today's groundbreaking is yet another start for a university that never stops growing. We're grateful to Ernest Shannon for making today possible and for helping us showcase how UC Davis strives for excellence, serving the greater good in our community, California, and the world. Our colleagues at UC Davis Health continue to be trailblazers and pioneers in the field of medicine. Now we want to share a video that illustrates how far we've come. I hope you enjoy this preview of what's ahead, all thanks to the amazing generosity of our donors. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed a glimpse into the new Channon Eye Institute building and of work that is being done at the site. More than 800 individuals, foundations, and corporations have supported this project. We want to acknowledge the many donors who have made our vision of the new Eye Institute a reality. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vice Chancellor for Development and Alumni Relations, Sean Keister. Vice Chancellor Keister functions as the campus chief fundraising officer and also serves as the president of the UC Davis Foundation. He led UC Davis successfully completing its first comprehensive fundraising campaign. The campaign for UC Davis raised more than $1.1 billion from 110,000 donors. Let's toss it back to Davis and hear from uh, Sean Keister. Good afternoon, everyone. We are thrilled that you could join us virtually to celebrate this groundbreaking with us. For those of you whom I haven't yet had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Sean Keister and I serve as the Vice Chancellor for Development and Alumni Relations at UC Davis. I like to brag that we at UC Davis had the very best donors, and I truly believe that. Their philanthropic efforts have helped us reach new heights as a university. Even amid the COVID-19 pandemic this year, our donors have remained steadfast in their dedication to our mission. One of those amazing donors is Mr. Ernest Shannon, who as Chancellor May mentioned, is the largest individual donor to UC Davis in the university's history, 
Without his generosity, this event would not be possible. Not only was Ernest instrumental in making this dream a reality, he also inspired many other donors to contribute to the Eye Center. Let's take a moment to acknowledge a few individuals who have joined with Ernest in making this vision a reality. This project has been supported by many, many donors, and we thank each and every one of you for your support. Philanthropy supports projects and endeavors for which we all benefit, and this newest facility is a perfect example of that. I am privileged to commemorate the groundbreaking of the Ernest E. Shannon Eye Center. I am certain it will be a beacon which will create positive change at our university, in our community, and around the world. Thank you all for being with us. It is inspiring to see the impact of philanthropy in action. Now back to our colleagues at UC Davis Health in Sacramento. Thank you, Sean. It was great to hear from you, and I want to re reiterate our gratitude to the many visionary supporters of this project. It is my pleasure now to welcome Dr. David Lubarski, Vice Chancellor of Human Health Services and Chief Executive Officer of UC Davis Health. Dr. Lubarski oversees UC Davis Health's academic research and clinical programs, including the School of Medicine, the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing, the faculty of a thousand members, and uh, the UC Davis Medical Center, a 625 bed level one hospital. Since joining our uh, health system in 2018, uh, Dr. Dabarski has catapulted the organization forward, forging relationships with government, uh, helping to create new opportunities for the underserved, and producing an economic model, earning UC Davis Health public rec recognition as a leader in caring for our population, including the underserved. It is also, he has also established groundbreaking partnerships with government, with entrepreneurs, with technology companies and other health systems to extend care into rural areas and to the urban core to address health disparities and health workforce needs. Without further ado, Dr. Lubarski. Thank you, Dr. Manis and Dr. Lim. And on behalf of UC Davis Health, I'm honored to be here today, even if it is virtually, with all of you. I certainly look forward to the day when we can all join together in person in the new Ernest E. Shannon I Institute building, hopefully not too long from now. Making this day possible is a long list of people to whom we owe enormous debts of gratitude for their generosity. But certainly at the top of that is Ernest E. Shannon himself. And to Ernest, I offer our highest gratitude for his dedication and his commitment to the years of donations to the Eye Center at UC Davis Health. He is truly a remarkable and inspiring leader in the Sacramento community, and we at UC Davis Health are indeed fortunate to have an incredible partner like him. The great thing is that a building like this attracts ever more donors, because when we put up an amazing, groundbreaking, 
clinical and research building that serves as a hub to teach the next generation of physicians, all of those patients that we treat here eventually, potentially, become yet another donor to extend the reach of this amazing eye center and department of ophthalmology and all the researchers across all of those departments that you heard Chancellor May speak about. So we are well on our way to doing yet a better job in curing blinding eye diseases and elevating UC Davis Health's ability to care for all people who have eye disease, regardless of their ability to pay. With a focus on innovation and collaboration, we will discover eye treatments, provide real patient-centered care, and train the physician leaders of tomorrow in this building on this site. And it is thanks to all of those people who care for the patients and who provide their generous donations. You know, a building in and of itself is a nice thing, but it's the faculty who really make the difference. They take this investment in them and they turn it into better research, into greater collaboration, into more advanced eye care. And so this building is really seed funding for great eye disease care. And that's what we're all about here. And we encourage everybody to continue supporting the Department of Ophthalmology and its groundbreaking research because they will make a difference for us all tomorrow. Well, without further ado, now I'd like to introduce Dr. Allison Bashir our Dean at the School of Medicine at UC Davis Health. Allison, who joined us just a little under a year ago, is internationally renowned for her groundbreaking research in movement disorders. She has deep expertise in health policy, executive leadership, and healthcare excellence as well. Allison. Thank you very much, Dr. Lubarski. It's been a pleasure to be part of the virtual celebration of the Ernest D. Shannon Eye Institute building. On behalf of the School of Medicine, I offer my deepest thanks to Ernest. Because of your generosity and that of many donors who have made advancements in eye care, we'll be able to do more clinical trials and more research that will improve the lives of many throughout Northern California. I am continually inspired by the generosity of our community leaders like you who are giving to improve the health of our community. The generosity of Ernest and our wonderful donors is key to the mission of educating and training the next generation of physicians. The Eye Center is a standard bearer for us, teaching multidisciplinary care and training our students to be lifelong learners. And now that is more essential than ever. Ernest, thank you again for your generous support of the Eye Institute and everything that you've done for UC Davis. We are forever grateful and we will be inspired by your heart and your generosity. And again, I extend my greatest gratitude to the donors who have made the mission possible to provide the best care and continue to show groundbreaking research. I look forward to thanking each and every one of you in person in the future. And now I'm gonna turn it back to Dr. Manis and Dr. Lim. Dean Bashir. We want to thank you for participating in this project and for your leadership and for being here for this celebration today. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Lubarski, and to both of you for your strategic, thoughtful leadership for all this transformative project. Dr. Manis, Ernest and I have been dreaming of this moment when we break ground on this project for several years. While this isn't exactly how we envision the groundbreaking event to take place, we feel incredibly fortunate that we have the tools to allow us to celebrate this occasion together. Before we go to our guest of honor, I want to thank many people who made this afternoon possible. But to our partners in Chicago and the team here in Sacramento, we thank you for not missing a beat and making this celebration a momentous occasion for everyone. And now we want to welcome our dear friend, Ernest Channon, to the virtual stage. Ernest. Hello, Ernest. I hope you're enjoying today's Hello. celebration and seeing all the progress. I'm so happy to be here with all these people who appreciate what I have done. And I am thankful for everybody who is here. And I really am thankful for this country. Uh, this gave me the opportunity 
to come ahead in life, to be successful. And uh, I, um, that is also uh, one of the reasons I want to give the money I made here. I want to give it back to American society. Uh, and especially UC Davis, because I'm a patient of Dr. Dr. Lim, and uh, he, I was so excited about the good work she did for me. She operated both my eyes. I had glaucoma, and thanks to her, I am still seeing good here. And uh, that is one one of the reasons I decided I want to give back to UC Davis. And uh, I am just glad I'm able to do that. And uh, this will be, for generations to come, uh, a good, uh, valuable asset for the university to have this building here. And uh, it will be uh, helpful to patients and doctors for generations to come, and I'm really happy that I was able to help doing that here. I came from uh, Switzerland when I immigrated here, uh, pretty poor, uh, as poor as a church mouse, and I did, I did very well, and so uh, I'm thankful that I'm here and able to do that and to contribute to the UC Davis to get a, a good university where the uh, patients benefit, the doctors benefit from uh, modern facilities and patients benefit from good doctors and ophthalmology. And I'm glad I'm able to help doing that. This building has been uh, in the thinking for quite several years. I don't know how many, maybe 10, 15 years. And I think Dr. Lim and me, we were actually the, the biggest reason that it was built, of course, Dr. Manas with uh, a lot of uh, and, uh, efforts, he, he did a tremendous job to get this building built. And uh, I'm thankful to Dr. Manis also. But I, I was just going to say, Dr. Lim and me, we were actually the uh, persons to be uh, responsible that it's being built. I mean, so, but there are a lot of other people help helped on that uh, uh, building to be built. And now we're in the day of groundbreaking, and that is a fantastic day. And I want to. I'm thankful to everybody who contributed to this day. And uh, I'm thankful for everything that has been done here. Okay. No. <laughs> Should I say something? Thank you, Ernest. It's always a breath of fresh air to be with you. And we really can't thank you enough for all that you have done and for all that you will do for us and for our patients. Most importantly, we value your wonderful friendship. However, we do have a small token of appreciation for everything you have done for us. One of Ernest's greatest passions is his garden. And if you go to his garden, you will see the great work and care that he has put into making a backyard paradise. That's right, Mark. Ernest has been known to bring home soil from the many places he's visited and loves to use the soil in his garden. So since he can't be standing next to each of us today with shovels in our hands, we've taken soil from the site of the Ernest E. Channon Eye Institute building to give you, Ernest, for your garden. Mm. 
I am very excited that this building will be utilized by immensely talented clinician scientists, researchers, and educators. I'm proud of that our faculty will have a facility that really matches the caliber of excellence that is reflected in their patient care, their teaching, and their research endeavors. This is a world-class facility for a world-class group of physicians. I agree with you, Mark, and I'm also pleased that the building is designed for ease of navigation that'll help reduce any added stress for patients during their experience when they come to the Channon Eye Institute. I've also really enjoyed working with the various teams who absorbed all of our ideas and requirements for the new facility and created what we see today. We uh, would like to end the program uh, with a few special thank yous to people who have been so important to uh, the architects Arch Nexus, to Vayner Construction, TEF Design, HGA, and McCarthy Construction, to our in-house team, Joel Swift, uh, Nancy Gordon, Samara Lull, who are members of our UC Davis Health Facilities and Design team. And last but certainly not least, to Lance Durfee, who's our lead in this project. Thank you all for helping us reach this day of groundbreaking and helping us design a facility that will reflect the great empathy we have for our patients and will be a building that has genuine regard for the mission of restoring sight. We look forward to your continued partnership. I think it's time we toast this occasion and those who have made this project possible. Let's turn it over to Chancellor May and Davis, and I believe we have some others joining us on screen. I invite you all to raise a glass with us. Thank you all for joining us today for this celebratory event. Michelle, thank you for being with me and for partnering with me all the way. One of the things that I value most about being a part of the Eye Center and a part of UC Davis is that our donors become part of our family. For example, Ernest has become a very close friend of uh, the Lim Sanders family, including their children, um, Julia, age 12, and Matthew, age 9, and uh, he has developed a real relationship with them, hiking with them, visiting with them. Uh, we're now going to have uh, Julia and Matthew read a book that was created for Ernest by UC Davis, commemorating the establishment of the new Eye Center. Images of the book will appear on the screen so you can follow as Julia and Matthew read. A long time ago in the small village of Arvingen, Switzerland, near the winding river in the large castle, there lived a boy named Ernest Channon. Ernest was one of four children. He was an industrious and ambitious child and used his tools and skills to always follow his passions no matter where they took him. For fun, Ernest enjoyed exercise and reveled in exploration from cross-country skiing to biking all over Switzerland and Austria. Ernest also enjoyed connecting with a world much bigger than his small German-speaking town. So Ernest studied English while in school and perfected French while he spent a year delivering bread throughout Lake Geneva. After school, Ernest served in the Swiss Army where he studied engineering and worked as an arms mechanic during World War II. Though this wasn't his dream job, he viewed it as a stepping stone to, to better opportunities. After his time in the Army, Ernest got a job designing flour mill machinery and taught at a trade school for mechanics. But after a while, Ernest became restless. He wanted to move to the United States, but getting a visa to the land of opportunity was difficult. However, he learned visas were much easier to get in Canada, and so, with the intention of returning home in three years, Ernest began his journey to North America. 
Carrying out only 100 francs, about $25, Ernest eventually made his way to Toronto. Once there, he spent his time working, designing tractor attachments, and even learning how to score dance. But he never lost sight of his ultimate goal of one day making it to the United States. The day would finally come when Ernest was 29. He jumped into his red Studebaker and crossed the Ambassador Bridge into Detroit, Mich Michigan, USA. Ever the adventurer, Ernest arrived in Detroit without a job, contact, or anywhere to call home. He soon found a room on a week-to-week -week basis. It was there that he met the person who would change the course of his life, his landlady. She piqued his interest in real estate and encouraged him to go into the field. Her husband was skeptical. You'll be sorry for the rest of your life, he said. But Ernest was intrigued and undaunted. He moved to Minneapolis, where he started to pursue his real estate on the side. He hired people who knew how to run and care for properties, and with their skills and his as an engineer who could design buildings, Ernest began buying property. After he acquired 100 apartments, he decided to put all his focus on real estate. Ernest eventually went on to buy properties all over the map in Nebraska, Texas, and beyond. Ernest lived in Minneapolis for 30 years, but with its long winters and lack of mountains, he longed to live in a place where he could exercise and enjoy the outdoors year-round. So he decided to move to California and chose to reside in a city formerly known as the land settlement New Switzerland, Sacramento. Ernest began purchasing properties to develop throughout the Sacramento area. He lived in his different properties for several years until he finally found the perfect house with lots of yard space and close to hiking trails. Life was good for Ernest. It had been quite a journey going from humble beginnings to amassing a great fortune throughout his real estate ventures, and he was grateful. Though Ernest enjoyed his work, he wanted to devote much of his time to philanthropy and give back in ways that would benefit a lot of people, and that's exactly what he did. Ernest gave to food banks and gave to his church. He gave to Sacramento area organizations, including the American River Parkway Foundation, and he gave to the Tahoe Pyramid Bikeway. Ernest expanded his philanthropic legacy to reach overseas and gave back to his hometown of Arwingen. He valued the good education he received there in his youth, and he was grateful. Ernest had enjoyed a good health and an active lifestyle. But when his eyesight started to fail, threatening the activities he enjoyed so much and his independence, he sought treatment at the UC Davis Eye Center. It was there he met Dr. Mark Manis and glaucoma specialist Dr. Michelle Lim, who successfully performed eye surgery on Ernest. Because of the care he received from Dr. Lim and the Eye Center, Ernest was able to continue being the outdoorsman and avid traveler he has always been. And he was grateful. In fact, Ernest was so grateful for the gift of his renewed sight that he wanted to give back to the UC Davis Eye Center. And he did. He gifted UC Davis with a record-breaking $38.5 million. Today, because of Ernest, construction will begin on a new building at the Eye Center, which will provide advanced vision care to its patients, young and old, for generations to come. For years, countless people all over the world have benefited from Ernest's generosity and his impact will reach far into the future. The Ernest T. Chan and I Institute will serve as a testament to Ernest's true spirit of philanthropy, and we are grateful. Thank you, Julia and Matthew, great job. And I want to thank all of you for your tireless support of the Eye Center. I look forward to seeing you in person on the other side of the pandemic. And of course, when we open the doors of the Ernest D. Channon Eye Institute. In the meantime, most important to us is that you remain safe and stay well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.